Hello, fire signs. Welcome to the end of January 2023. Um, so keep in mind, guys, this is general. We're going to be looking at um, all of the fire signs in this session. And we're going to look at what um, we're going to we're, we're wrapping up the end of January here, the energies for January. So this is going to be a little more a little a little more time sensitive than normal. Um, because it is about, it is a, a message being channeled from a specific time period, but this could resonate for you at any time. The realizations could sink in, could settle in, could be, become available to you, or you could become aware of the realizations at any moment. So that means that this could really ultimately resonate for you at any moment. But again, we're still kind of just, we're focusing on a specific energy right now. Um, so we're, that's what we're going to do. And I want to start by... <clears throat> getting a collective message for all of the fire signs and then we're going to break things down and i'm going to do my best to keep track of the timestamps. so there are timestamps in the description box um, and in the pinned comment below so if you want to maybe skip the collective and just go to whatever or skip around do it as you please yeah we're working with the um the moonology deck there it is <laughs> And uh, I want to get just an overall, I like to use this deck for cycles, for understanding cyclical energies, okay? And that makes perfect sense if this is a deck surrounding the moon. And the moon is quite cyclical in nature, right? Okay. Aries, I want to say that your energy is coming through very strongly right now. Like, I almost want to just jump to your reading, but I want to do the collective first. So, breathe, Aries. <laughs> you feel very excited. Honestly, for the fire signs here, there's a lot of excitement. There could be a renewed sense of passion for you. You, as identifying it as a fire sign in some way, um, and this isn't really intended to be talking to the cross watchers, although you could be cross watching for a fire sign. Um, but I'm, I'm going to talk to the fire signs right now. Those who identify with fire in some way. Okay. Whether that be sun, moon, rising, Venus, north or south node, some other placement, or you just have this affinity. Or you're trying to connect with fire. This message is intended to resonate with you somehow. Take it as it resonates. But fire signs, you may have, you may find yourself enter, e exiting a period of lack of passion and entering into a period of renewed passion, whatever that, whatever that means for you. For some of you, you were actively flowing against your natural fire ability. For some of you, there was some sort of like internalized hatred because of your relationship with the element of fire and what that represents, passion, desire, lust, creativity, raw power, okay? And how damaging all of that can be if not handled appropriately, right? You're coming out of this now, fire signs, in some way. This could be way more deep, way more subconscious for you. There could be a lot of other things wrapped up in, in this circumstance and, and or situation, but at the very core of it, even if it's just a tiny part of it, there's still a truth about your element fire or this element fire for you that you were kind of in friction with okay so fire signs end of january okay uh, you guys you're starting with um disseminating moon in reverse T take time to breathe out but see, fire signs, you're coming out of this, okay? You were in a moment. You, ha you were in a timeout. For some of you, you may have even put yourselves <laughs> in a timeout consciously. You did this on purpose. Now you have new moon in Gemini. Okay, we're good here. Now we have new moon in Gemini, upright. Communication is key. Okay, so now fire signs, it's time to come out of this period, this moment of rest, relaxation, recuperation, meditation. I'm seeing the hermit for you. Somehow, some way, some of you shut your power off. And I want to say, for most cases, for a very good reason. 
Um, and I feel like over this time period where you may have been in hermit mode, we'll say, right? Time to take time to breathe out. You were recalibrating this situation and or circumstance, and now it's time to emerge and communicate. For some of you, there is a need to communicate with someone, um, have a conversation with someone, explain something to someone. For others of you, this communication feels like creativity. So it's not necessarily communicate in order to resolve. For some of you, this communication is in order to share what it is you now know and or understand. Okay, this transformation that has been inspired within you, there is something now that is to come of it. And now is the time to share that. Okay, last card you have, or at least now is the time to start sharing that. <laughs> Yo, Aries, I, I shit you not, like this last card that we have here, it came out face down. And as I was just clarifying that last bit of that thought and uh, 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 channeling, I turned this card over and I saw what it was as I was saying what I was saying. And I knew, I saw what it was immediately, I knew what it was, but I didn't know what it said specifically the definition of the card well it's you aries new moon in aries it's time to take action so this is why aries energy is coming through so strong for the fire signs right now because it's not necessarily about aries although it could be you could have a double fire placement or and one of those be aries or multiple placements in aries okay but multiple important placements in Aries. And I want to be specific here. For some of you, it is multiple placements in Aries at this time or at, at whatever moment this is resonating for you, okay? So astrologically, you could have a unique setup of transits that has a lot to do or something to do with Aries that is making this resonant for you. So that's why Okay, so in the beginning when I was trying to clarify who this reading was for, I was feeling like a little cross between it's kind of also, this message is also kind of meant for someone who doesn't necessarily have an Aries placement, but yet is resonating with Aries somehow, or resonating with fire. That's originally I was talking about fire, but so, okay, we'll, we'll zoom out and say that instead. We'll just say fire. You either, you don't necessarily have a placement with fire, so that would kind of technically make you a cross watcher, and yet you are still resonating with this in some way. And I do feel like it's an Aries activation. So also, aha, remember, and I just did, I just channeled this on Patreon yesterday. Remember, Mars just went direct earlier in January. On the 13th was the final day of Mars stationing direct. And from there on, Mars was moving direct, right? So we just came out of Mars retrograde. What does Mars rule? Aries. So this is why fire may be resonating for you. And for my Aries out there, I know, speaking as one, I know for a fact that, and it's been proven to me consistently ever since, but once Mars was officially di direct, I was ready to go. Full on action oriented. Whereas while Mars was retrograde, I was really trying to hang back. And I'm going to tell you something, y'all, I loved, I was really enjoying an aspect of Mars retrograde, that being allowing me to find the time to rest and I needed it and and, and that it, <laughs> take time to breathe out in reverse it's time we're coming out of this now guys right now it's time to take action okay okay what I want to do now ah uh, what I want to do now is break this down between the signs, and I'm going to use the tarot here for that, okay? Um, and I'm going to leave these, this, this, these cards here as the overall energy. I'm sorry, I know you, with my current setup, you guys can't see the cards, but I'm going to show them to you as much as possible to help you understand. Um, well, as much as appropriate, okay. Uh, but before I do that, I want to look at the bottom of the deck here. We have another new moon. And this time it's in our brother or sister sign of Leo. The fire signs are showing up. Sag hasn't shown up here. Instead, Sag's opposite showed up, right? Isn't Gemini the op? I might be very wrong on that. No, no, that is right. The third and the ninth house, Gemini and Sagittarius. 
Okay, and now here's Leo. Confidence is your key to success. Remember that, keep that in mind. All right, we are gonna break this down now. Starting naturally with Aries, then Leo, then Sag, yeah? Okay. Cool. Hello, Aries. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. Uh, I really recommend that you guys watch the collective part of this first and then get into the more specific signs uh, because that collective message is m intended to kind of tie everything together. So, okay, if you find yourself here or at Leo or at Sag first, and then you ultimately go back to the collective message, that's okay. As long as you listen to the collective message, if these specific ones resonate with you, then please do that. Make sure you do that, okay? Excellent. Two more shuffles for you, Aries. Let's look at what this energy is for you. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, North, South node, or any other placement you desire to take a gander into, yeah? Last, oh wait, last shuffle. Okay, Aries, what is this for you? It's time to take action, communication is key, time to take a, whoop, death. Bam, right off the bat, Aries, you've got death. Okay, transformation, yeah. But um, Aries, it's like you're rising from the dead or there is an energy here for now. Now, also, this could be specific Aries placements, but this could also be resonant with this Aries dominant energy we have in the overall energy for the fire signs. OK, so if you're watching it for that reason, then take this into account, take it as it resonates. But there is an energy here of you of you or something rising from the dead Aries, something that was taken to be dead and done and over and gone. This very well could be a relation. <laughs> well, hello, look at, we have a parade of, parade of chickens. Hello, oh, hello, Paul. Mm -hmm. Hi guys. Anyway, um, something, I'm hearing taken for granted. There may have been something, I, I heard something was taken for granted and it seemingly died, but now it has risen. But if that is how this is resonating for you, I'm not sure that you are involved with that circumstance and or situation in the same way for better or for worse take it as it resonates you i am feeling dominantly that someone someone now finds themselves on the outside of something that they were want, looking into something they were once a part of but they chose to take it for granted and the situation died off and they and they left parties went their own ways whatever but then it grew back and it grew back stronger and you're not, or they're not involved with it anymore. And so now there's a bit of envy, there's jealousy, jealousness I'm hearing, um, maybe even regret, remorse, shame, guilt, and fear of what's to come. How dominant you will be, how powerful you will be, or this whatever now is rising from the dead will be. There is also a kind of like a phoenix from the ashes risen type of energy. So you or this situation may yes be rising from the dead, but in a very, different way <laughs> I mean very different I'm smelling decay now I wasn't smelling that before I just got a whiff a whiff of decay I mean I live in the jungle that could be anywhere but I wasn't smelling it before now I am but immediately that doesn't even I mean it's a gross smell but that doesn't even to me, the first thing I think of is fertilizer, because whatever is decaying is ultimately going to provide nutrients for new growth, right? I mean, that's the way I like to see it. But that uh, it is also mirroring this death aspect here, okay? Transformation. What else for Aries? Anything else for Aries? The Six, <laughs> the six of Swords. Ooh, and that's it. Okay. Whoa. Wow. All right. Okay, you have the Six of Swords with the Fool, and then you have the Ace of Pentacles that flew out and fell on the floor face down. And to me, that's reading as rejecting of 
rejecting of some sort of offer Aries is the first thing that I want to say uh, keep your wits about you I'm hearing uh, this may be an energy in which you are feeling um, or of the mindset of keep your enemies close you may want to be doing this I feel like because of this transformation that you have gone through or this situation has gone through those that may have rejected you or the situation in the past may now be returning trying to make an offer that you quote cannot refuse and yet all you do is laugh in their face and keep moving forward in the direction that you're currently going in that has nothing to do with them or their circumstances or their offers to you part of this transformation that is happening aries is you or this situation having been rejected in its previous form that is what is helping drive this transformation altogether so it's not even about you being better than them or you trying to get back at them for rejecting you before it's no longer an energetic match well it really never was an energetic match a proper energetic match and thus that is why it could not be sustained in its pre in its pre-existing form or its previous form excuse me but now it's even more of an energetic mismatch because they're not or the whatever this offer is that's trying to come in to like make amends or say i'm sorry it's it's not even about that it's actually a i am gratefully moving forward from here and yes i'm moving away from you but i am grateful to you even within the proper perspectives or the the right perspectives this person or you could be saying i'm grateful to you for rejecting me because you helped me to transform into the powerful being that I am right now, which is allowing me to move forward. So thank you. And that is also why Aries, this Ace of Pentacles came out, flew on the floor, fell face down. But when I picked it up, it came up upright. While you may be rejecting whatever this offer is. It doesn't mean you are holding disdain and or disrespect for it. You are just appropriately and properly saying no. Thank you, but I, I no longer wish to accept this offer. I'm no longer interested in this. An overall energy at the bottom of the deck is the King of Wands. And underneath that, which is catching my attention, is also the Two of Pentacles. You are very balanced in your stance here. This is the point. This is the, this is the energy that you are in, Aries, that is saying thank you for your offer, but no because it doesn't it, it is a mismatch it is in misalignment to what my vision is the king of wands is a very vision oriented type of energy he sees what he wants because he knows what he wants and he knows be what he wants because he sees what he wants get it okay it's a self-fulfilling energy self-propagating energy right okay but it's very focused and if it if it's not an alignment if it's a mismatch it, there there's no other um there's no other stance. There's nothing else to say but no, right? Okay. Uh, confidence is your key to success, Aries. Remember that. And this is that confidence right there. Confidence that is fueled and driven. There you go. There you go. There you go, Aries. Confidence that is fueled and driven by the death and decay of the pain and heartbreak and the old circumstances that you were going through. The Three of Swords is that, that energy of murder, we'll call it. Or that, yes, that energy that creates a circumstance in which something is mutilated or dies at the very least, and then ultimately decays and provides mulch, well, fertilizer, compost for the new growth over time in time seven of pentacles which then brings wisdom and understanding and knowledge and a deeper connection with self the high priestess which sets one free death the fool and the six of swords beautiful aries beautiful 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 aries i love this for you all right Take it as it resonates. Oh, shoot. Actually, I didn't. You know what? No, no. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I, originally, I was going to do all three of the signs and leave the cards there. But now I don't think I want to do that. Can I even? 
uh, no. Okay, it's too late now anyway. Ooh, 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 don't do that. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. All right, cool. So I'm just going to reset through each. And maybe for the other elements, I'll do it the other way. But that's how this one's flowing, so it's all right. But we are going to leave the overall energy. So that was Aries. Next, we're going to get into Leo. For Leo. I want to cut the deck for you, Leo. Boop. Oh, shoot. I didn't write down the time. <laughs> um... Hi, Leo. All right. Uh, Leo. I, uh, Leo, for you, uh, and again, I'm going to say this, I'm going to repeat this. Uh, if you haven't watched the collective part of this reading, you're more than welcome to watch this one first if that's what you truly desire. But if this really does resonate for you, we really encourage you to watch, to go back and watch the um, collective part of this because that's really where the bulk of the core of this message is coming from, okay? And now we're just breaking it down. But for you, Leo, I'm hearing steadfastness is your key to success, okay? And now you're, 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 the, you're the fixed of the fire signs. So either it does or it has the potential to come naturally to you, this required steadfastness steadfastness yes okay so let's see what we've got for you with this leo overall energy at the bottom of the deck so far yeah Ooh. whoa we've got the king of cups i like that leo steadfastness tempered with a strong heart and a compassionate heart okay the king of cups may be strong and rigid and have strong emotional foundations, but he is also a, a, a highly compassionate and empathic being. Okay, remember that. It may be kind of hidden, you know, he may have some tough walls to get through before you reach that soft, gooey center, but trust me, it's there. And he is well aware of it. And that is what you need to be embodying in this moment, Leo. And I, I feel like this is okay corruption i just heard corruption um this you're dealing some of you are dealing with corruption somehow whether this be in your heart or in the hearts of others but what i'm feeling here in this is this is a way to heal uh, uh, or, or prevent corruption because leo remember you're the lion you are very royal very regal you have a lot of pride a, a strong sense of pride and with that can come the propensity towards an inflamed or enlarged ego right all of that pride can get twisted and turned around and turned upside down and inside out and it and it can become backwards and that's where corruption can start to really set in right this energy of the king of cups of knowing where he stands that's true but still being compassionate enough to allow himself to be open and vulnerable in the appropriate settings and circumstances is what helps to keep this regal loyal a prideful energy grounded and keep it washed clear and clean of corruption because as long as you have compassion flowing through you there is no way for corruption to settle in right it's very much like um growing a plant i i'm a big time gardener potential farmer even so like i, I um I like to make garden analogies if you're new to me, but it's very much like having uh, organic living soil. And by living soil, I mean dirt that is also comprised of um, mulch or, and or compost um, uh, and living microorganisms that uh, create a um, biodiverse ecosystem within that soil that then works with the plant that provides the nutrients for the plant for it to grow. Where, where was I going with this? Ah, uh, yes. If there is oxygen in this soil, then that means... I always get this backwards and I feel so ashamed. I'm... Uh, mm. There, there are, I, I'm going to say it this way for brevity's sake also, <laughs> um, there, uh, uh, there are certain conditions that allow the good beneficial bacteria to live in that soil and that's what you want. Um, and that condition would be having this compassion flowing through you because if there are 
if it's the opposite condition, then the bad, toxic bacteria that will kill your plant will live, right? And that's not what you want. That's the corruption. And having this King of Cups compassionate energy flowing through you is what's going to help keep you from falling to the plight or the, the blight, excuse me, of corruption, okay? That is very important for you right now, Leo. It is very, excuse me, it is very important for you to understand and work with right now, okay? You're not being reprimanded. You're not being told that you're corrupt. You're not being warned that you're about to get corrupted. No. You are at a place in your spiritual and personal development right now where you can start to actively take on this next part of your spiritual foundation. Working on how to be in this Leo, confident, successful, prideful, albeit appropriately prideful, energy without getting corrupted. And specifically, Leo, for some of you, I'm pick picking up on the fact that you are leaders in such that you are then, in mastering this for, them, for yourself, you can then teach others to do it, even if it's just by osmosis, even if it's just you actively living it and physically showing it, and not even really intending to teach someone, but someone's watching you and picking up on it. It's like, yeah, I could do that. Oh yeah, I like that. Right, okay, okay. So, King of Cups, I'm gonna leave this out here for you. Also, you do have the Empress at the bottom of the deck. This is beautiful. Uh, there's a lot of creative potential for you right now also, Leo. So what I'm seeing with the Empress for you, Leo, right now, in terms of you needing to take action what you, and, and communication is key here, okay? What it is you are meant to now be communicating to the world. The Empress is representing, hold on. Sorry guys, there was a community announcement going by and I wanted to let it pass before I continued so you could hear me clearly. Um, but I was saying the Empress. The Empress here is representing the universe that is behind you and the creative potential that is behind you right now. I feel like you are, and this is such a big reason as to why, there, there's, a, there's a sense of duty here, but th this is also such a big reason, Leo, as to why your sense of being able to re be washed washed clean of any sense of corruption or any sort of corruption and being able to maintain that is so important for you to learn and to understand right now because you literally have all of the creative potential of the universe behind you right now and with great power comes great responsibility and that is something that we are all as a human collective right now are learning big time you are potentially leading the way here makes perfect sense it's that announcement you can probably hear it but uh hold on <laughs> windy mountain roads i literally had time to like go to the bathroom get more tea <laughs> Because it just, it, the, the, the truck that was making this announcement that was just going by would like fade away and like go around a corner and then come around another corner on the same road, but like still be able to be heard loud and clear all of a sudden. And so I also pulled more cards. Um, there were, I was following the flow at the bottom of the deck and Leo, Leo, you are meant to be creating something right now. Okay. You really are. And the universe is behind you on this. 100%. And I'll show you why. This was all just at the bottom of the deck for you. I don't know how much else we're going to pull because oh, the message is the message. But it started with the King of Cups, right? We talked all about that. With the Empress, the universe. This is, the Empress in this situation for you, Leo, is creating or uh, is um, uh, representing the creative uh, potential of the universe that is literally at your disposal right now, like standing right behind you, okay? You're meant to be creating something with this, but also look at this. <clears throat> this is the feminine masculine dynamic. Through the combination of the feminine and the masculine, physical, uh, a physical being is born, right? The mother and the father. And Leo, this is you here. Whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter, but you, the, the King of Cups is representing the, 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 the counterpart to, okay, I'm sorry, the Empress is the great spiritual mother, right? The creative potential that's behind you. You are the child of this great creative potential who is ready to now give, to help give birth to more beings, more children through your work with this creative potential. And this is who that is. This is that masculine. This is that physical representation of the being.
and it, it, it's the physicality that the masculine represents that is what is indicated here. This is the spiritual, this is the physical, and this is the being in the physical reality that is actively working to channel and bring this life, this being, this life into physical reality. Page of Cups. Father, mother, child, birth. And then underneath the, two, the, the Page of Cups is the Two of Cups. So, uh, for some of you, this is con physical confirmation that you have a partner coming into your life. This could just be a creative partner, like a creative business partner. This could be an artistic partner. This could be a romantic partner. For others of you, this is confirmation that you are about to have a child. Or maybe that you going on the path of towards pursuing the path of starting a family, building a life, uh, having children. This is where you're going. This is where you're headed. This is what's next for you. This is, this is what's to come. If this is what you're choosing to do, if this is something that you're choosing to do and you appreciate this message, then take it as confirmation that you're doing the right thing. Now, the Two of Cups here could really also just represent, Leo, the creative action of these two energies, these two forces, masculine and feminine, coming together. The, also, the Two of Cups could just be confirmation that, you know, this creative partnership, we'll call it, co-creation is happening, okay? That's enough. Okay. All right, Leo. So, but okay, see, that is enough because <laughs> that's a lot to take in, right? Okay, we talked about a lot here. Um, and the biggest thing that I really want to focus on for you is the responsibility here. Learning, allowing yourself to work with the circumstances in order to, to, to really deepen your understanding of this whole keeping clear of corruption type of energy, okay? Keeping your, I can't remember if it's anaerobic or or aerobic, which one is which, which is which one is the bad one, which one is good one. But those are the terms that I always confuse. You have the Ace of Pentacles here. Yeah, this is, a, again, gardening a seed, an Ace of Pentacles. This is, an, this is, this is good for you here. Th th this is good for you here. This is a good thing. Um, there, there is an offer that is being made to you right now. There is a gesture. And even if it's just by the universe, Leo, and I think you know what I mean, you know, you're, there is an opportunity for you that is being handed to you by the hand of the universe. Whether you're just feeling it on an energetic or intuitive knowledge-based level or, and or it could be, you actually have something physically showing up in your life right now, okay? Even, again, even if it's just the opportunity to take a certain action, right? But also remember, with great power comes great responsibility. There you have it, Leo. All right, Sagittarius. <coughs> I'm so used to doing sessions like this live. Like, I feel like I'm live right now. So I'm like, all right, hold on, guys. Like, I feel like I should be talking to you guys in between all of these right now, but that's okay. You're, you're chilling, you're vibing with me. Unfortunately, I don't feel like going live in this space specifically is going to work because I, I can't reach my um, Wi-Fi and I don't know if my phone service is good enough to stream live consistently and not drop things. So anyway, there's that. Saggy. Hello, Sagittarius. All right, let's break this down for you, Saggy. Like I said with Leo and Aries, if you find yourself watching this first and you have not watched the collective part of this message, please, please, and this resonates with you, please, 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 please make sure you watch the collective part because that's where we're drawing this message for you specifically, okay? We're breaking down this collective message and this collective message here is that we're coming out of some sense of a hermit mode and it's time to take action and either communicate with someone about something maybe a potential relationship 
or the downfall potentially of a certain relationship um, to in order to heal. But really the communication that we're talking about here is communicating something that you took time to heal yourself on, whether that be saying something, speaking something, writing something, um, uh, creating some sort of art because of it, some sort of work of art because of it, um, or communicating your your vision, your sight, your goal, whatever. Communication could just be the creative expression of whatever it is you have healed and that has ultimately given rise to within you, okay? It's time to take action. All right, Sag, three more shuffles here. What does this mean for you? I'm getting a little, a sense of nervousness, maybe even a little bit, of, a little twinge of fear. You're excited. I, uh, Sag, I feel like you might either actually be, or at least just feel like you are out of your depth. That's where there's a bit of anxiety, a little restlessness, almost like it, it, it's, it's borderline fear. Maybe it is a little bit of fear. Anxiousness. How, how, how do I control this? How, how, how do I handle this? What, what do I do, God? I, 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 don't, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> Very much, if you guys know, I mean, many of you have been following me for a long time, so you might be on this wavelength with me but um one of my favorite movies is the fifth element and you remember in the end of the movie when they're trying to get off the the, the ship because of the bomb and everything and 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 well it's not even that oh no it's not even that it's at the very end of the movie even too when um it ruby rod when he when like uh, when they're trying to activate the stones and he's like oh, I, I got no fire i, I stopped smoking with the father you smoke i, I stop smoking i don't got no fire <laughs> God, I love that movie. But that's what I'm feeling for you right now, Saj. You don't... I, I want to say... The position that you're in right now, Sagittarius, is a good thing. The fact that you're here at all and are consciously aware of this is a good thing to begin with. So settle in there. Allow yourself to find some sense of normalcy, I'm hearing. But like... Ooh, like, ooh, like whoa. <laughs> Oh, Sag, you may need, you may still need to breathe. It's funny because when this for card first came out, Sagittarius, it came out reversed. And one of the things I was feeling for this was like, somebody needs to breathe. Someone is like, whoa, like somebody, but, but the dominant message here is that we are coming out of this time period of restfulness. And uh, Sag, I feel like for you, it's causing a little bit of anxiety because it is now time to take action. And something about it is just like, oh. Like, uh, you know, you know, when you're like shaking because you're afraid or something like that, or you're just like your nerves are just uh, like, that's what. I'm going to give this one more shuffle. And two more breaths. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's a little better. What's going on for Sag? What's this action? Page of Pentacles. For some of you, this could actually be also uh, a new life. Um, having a child. You, uh, ooh, okay. Someone may find themselves uh, uh, suddenly pregnant. Uh, originally, what I was battling there was what I was originally hearing was randomly pregnant. No such thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, I, uh, do I believe in immaculate conception? I don't. Uh, I don't know. Uh, is someone? Ooh, is someone? Ch mm, girl. Okay. Anyway, so but for some of you, there, there, there's some, there's something about a baby here. Whether you it is you are already pregnant or you're trying to give birth, maybe you may have learned recently it, during this restful time period in which you learned about something, an element that was keeping you from, uh, was causing you to miscarriage or potentially miscarriage, or at the very least, just keeping you from being able to give birth. And now you've figured out and or have realized what that is and how to deal with it, how to come to terms with it. And now it's time to take action towards that because you're meant to have a child. If this is resonating for you in that sense, you are meant to have a child. And that's why you're so anxious about this, because it's like, is this going to work? Well, I will say this. You never know until you try. Mm -hmm. Right? 
give it that good old college try and like, uh, you know, faith the size of a mustard seed type of situation, right? This doesn't have to be a physical child though. This page of pentacles could also represent a business. Something like that. Ooh. Have faith in yourself, believe in the possibility, believe in your circumstances. Stand firm in your foundation, stand your ground. And 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 part of this, it, part of the big part, main reason why Spirit is saying this to you right now, Sagittarius, is because you need to have faith. You need to believe in yourself. You need to believe in the plan. You need to believe in the universe. Specifically, Sagittarius, somebody here needs to hear this. You need to believe in the plan. You have to. Stand your ground in this space or else it's never going to work. Your belief is necessary or you would not be here involved directly with this situation. Be, you wouldn't, if, if, if your belief in this situation, the belief in the success and the fruitfulness of this situation, if that weren't necessary, you would not be involved in the actual physical creation slash manifestation of said topic, whatever it is we're talking about here. So you have to stand firm in your beliefs, your foundation, who it is you know you are. Seven of Wands crossed by the Four of Wands. That's it. I'm hearing there are no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If this is what you believe in, stand strong in it. Stand your ground. I'm going to leave it like this. Yep. Because the Seven of Wands is meant to be confirming and holding strong the beliefs, not destroying Maybe ooh, I'm hearing potentially destroying anything that comes to in opposition with it or standing in its way. Not that you're looking for a fight, but if someone comes at you cross-eyed, you're about to cross-eyed them right back. Stand your ground. Last card here, face down. It's the Knight of Wands. There you are, Sagittarius. Okay, so hey, all right. Sag showed up. We had Aries show up. We had Leo show up. And now Sag is showing up too. Sagittarius in the... Knight of Wands. So I'm hearing your passion is key here. Your drive, your focus. Ooh! Death. Just like Aries. You might have an Aries connection. You might have an Aries placement. This Mars retrograde having come to an end might be, di may I mean, it's directly affecting all of us. I mean, yeah, okay. We established that, but. Transformation. What does this death mean, Eric? Um, I heard somebody ask that. It's a good question. Uh, what does death mean for you? Transformation obviously is an aspect, is an element here. Obviously, it's transformation is what I'm hearing. Okay. Is that your... <laughs> I'm literally having a conversation with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, for some of you, it does mean transformation in the fact that your life is about to change because you're about to have a child. Your physical circumstances are about to change because you are preparing to have child or you are with child, I'm hearing. So everything has to change to reflect the circumstances of that reality. For better or for worse. What else is death? Death actually resonates in that way. Even if this is not a physical child for you. So let's say this page of pentacles is a business, Sag. Again, your life, your livelihood, your status is about to change. And here you go. There's the Ace of Pentacles again. So now it's time to get to work. Ooh, yes. Now it's time to get to work. Eight of Pentacles to the Chariot. The Eight of Pentacles representing the action that is necessary to take. The Chariot is the drive, the energetic, core, spiritual drive in that action. And in many cases here, that is now followed by the Ten of Swords, which is ending some sort of reality. So, oh my God. Sorry, guys. Taking it back to the child analogy. Whether this resonates for you or not, just, 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 just take it as it resonates. But Ten of Swords would be ending the 
going through the process of ending the circumstances that keep you from having a child. Of course, if that is possible, right? But there are some it, it, the, the physical steps to take in order to heal. Um, I'm hearing, let's say, if you have endometri endometriosis. And I'll, I'll share this in case you haven't come across this, but uh, I, I am a... Uh, um, I, I did, uh, maybe a few months ago, I came across some sort of, uh, uh, um, uh, maybe it was on Instagram or something of, I think it was a woman talking about how endometriosis has energetic roots in physical abuse as a child, sexual abuse as a child. And so through healing that, you can reverse such symptoms as endometriosis and thus be able to have children. In theory, I'm not saying this is a scientific, scientifically proven just yet, maybe it has been, I don't know, I haven't come across that confirmation, but I'm saying in theory, why? Because all disease has energetic roots. You heal those energetic roots, you transform out of the disease, right? In theory, okay, but, but that's what you're being presented with here. It's time to start taking that action. And for those of you where this is more of a, like a business situation, this could be why I'm hearing that your finances or your livelihood is about to change or improve even, because now you're going to be taking action towards building a business to pull, pull yourself out of that negative financial situation, we'll say, right? That's what death is for you, Sagittarius. Okay. I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really, truly hope this was helpful for you. Uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, I love you guys. Uh, if you want to get a reading with me, email me. Check out Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box below as well. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>